here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this seamless pattern. It's actually a two-step texture brush, and the leaves are one texture and the flowers are another texture. That way you can control the different colors. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, we're starting out with a 12 inch by 12 inch canvas at 300 dpi, and that translates out to 3600 pixels by 3600 pixels. In addition, I'm going to be using my black to white monochrome palette, and this is available for free to everybody, instant download. I'll leave a link in the description below. Next thing I want to do is set up my brushes. So here's a demo uh, set that I, I use, and I'm going to go ahead and go to my essential starters here, and these are also available for free for subscribers to my newsletter, and I'll leave a link for the in the description below for how to use these too. We're going to go ahead and use this texture starter, so I'm going to go ahead and slide that over to the left a little bit and select duplicate and then I'm going to drag and drop this one into my demos uh, 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 set there. I'm going to create, uh, actually I'm going to modify this just slightly and then I'm going to create a duplicate after that. So let's go ahead and modify it very quickly. I want to uh, scale this up. Let's see with rain. Okay. I want to actually scale this up to about 50% because I know I'm going to make a, I want this to be a pretty large uh, uh, pattern. So 50%. Okay. And I'm actually going to change the rendering right now too because I'm going to be using watercolor and I want I want the light glaze look to come through. So I'm going to go ahead and select light glaze. And those are the only two modifications I'm going to make to that starter brush. And when I'm satisfied, I'm going to go ahead and tap done. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it because we're going to make two brushes. All right. So let's get started on that first brush. Um, I'm going to go over to, uh, let's see, I'm in brushes already. I'm going to go up to my watercolor set. And again, you can use any set that you want. I just want to go for a nice watercolor look. Let's see where to put that. There it is. Watercolor is number one. Okay, and I'm going to select stems right there. Okay, and then I'm going to set up my colors here. So uh, this is a two-tone uh, two brush, and it uh, changes based on pressure. And so I want the lighter pressure, so I'm going to select this one right here, to be sort of this light gray color right there. And I want uh, actually, that's going to be the harder pressure, and I want the uh, lighter pressure to be the darker color. So I'm going to set it up just like this, so that the dark is showing here and the light is the secondary color. So this is primary and this is secondary. Okay, and now I'm ready to start drawing, but I think I want to dial my brush. Well, that might be too much. I'm going to go, let's see, where's that? Somewhere around 52% here. Okay, and then the next thing I want to do is I want to set up a grid. So I'm going to go over to Canvas. And the wrench canvas, I'm going to turn on drawing guide. And this is already set, but let's go ahead and set it again. So it's a 12 by 12 inch canvas. And if I select a 2D grid, all I have to do is tap this little number right there and tap 900 and done when I'm done. And it will give me a nice four by four grid. And then I can adjust the opacity of the grid itself, but this is fine. I just need it as a little guide. So when you're satisfied, just go ahead and tap done. I'm going to be drawing in these two columns right here. That's where I'm going to be concentrating and I'm going to kind of alternate where I put the flowers so I keep the balance in terms of the weight based on flowers. And I'm not going to draw the flowers yet. I'm just going to actually draw the place where I want the flowers. So I'm going to be working on stems and leaves here. So with this base drawing, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. And then I'm going to take the top layer selected. I'm going to select my transform tool. Let's push this down. And I'm going to move this. And I'm moving it so that it the, the halfway through the box is on the page edge. And you'll see the golden line there because I have snapping selected. And I'll show you that in just a moment. And then I'm going to move this over so that it's also centered. Oops, I just moved. Okay. 
there we go. So I have snapping selected with a distance of three, and uh, but I don't have magnetics because that it kind of I'm, I don't work well with magnetics, but I do well, work well with snapping. <laughs> okay, okay. Then I'm going to select that other layer, and I'm going to do just about the same thing, but on the opposite edge. So I'm going to bring this down, and again halfway through the box, so the little dots there on the page edge, and then I'm going to make this centered just like that. Okay, perfect. And now we're going to connect these, but I don't want to forget where my flowers are because I don't want to I don't want to put a whole bunch of stuff right here because that's where a flower is and I don't want to put a whole bunch of stuff there because that's where a flower is going to be. Okay, but I do want to connect these things. So I'm trying to think about like what is a nice way to to bring this all together. And there's going to be a flower here, so I want to have a little detail here, but I don't want it to be overpowering because I want the flower to be sort of center stage. So I probably put another little curly cue in here and then I'm thinking sort of draw this stuff down this way. Maybe a little half flower right up in there. So let's go ahead and do that first. Let's see. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to merge these together. Let's go ahead and do that right now actually. So select the top layer, merge down, and then I'm just going to start drawing. I'm thinking like that. Something like that. So cute little flower like that. Okay, and then I'm going to bring this down and have a little curly cue like that. Very light in color, but it kind of gets me in this little groove like that. Okay, and I'm trying to decide, do I like that going over the top like that? I'm not sure that I do. Let's, uh, let's play with that just a little bit, maybe like that. Yeah, I think I would prefer that. Okay, so now the last thing I kind of want to do is I want to look at these edges in here and I think I want to smooth them together a bit so I'm going to go ahead and press and hold so that selects the same brush that I've been using the stem brush for my smudge tool and here I'm going to bring this down so I can rest my hand right here on the table for a little bit of uh, stability and I'm just going to kind of smooth these out so that it doesn't look like there's a whole bunch of lines overflowing too much you know I want it to look more like it's watercolor really Kind of smooth these edges together as if water is flowing between the lines here, which is kind of, you know, the effect I'm after. Okay, so. Awesome. Okay, and I think my hand just needs a little smoothing up too. Okay, so that's great. That's our basic shape here that we're going to be using for our offset pattern. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and slide it gently to the left, tap duplicate, and do that again. I'm going to hide this bottom one, turn off the visibility just for a moment while I move these two into position. Okay, so I'm going to do basically what we did before. So we're going to move this top one up here, and we want it centered, and we also want the half, the half, the dots in the half part of the box to be on the edge. And so, whoops. And it will look really nicely lined up in the golden lines. Okay, let's see. I want to make sure that that golden line is in the middle there. All right, it isn't, but I know that it. it I know that it is lined up. So we're going to just go ahead and go with that. That looks good. Okay, then we're going to go to the other layer below it, and we're going to do the same thing except bring it down. Okay, and you can see it's lining up there. So we're we're in good shape here. Okay, perfect. All right, now I'm going to merge these two together. Tap to that top one, tap merge down. Okay, now I'm going to make a duplicate of this and I'm going to move them over to the sides here. So let's go ahead and slide that over, tap duplicate, and with that top one, that top layer selected, let's go ahead and select our transform tool. And now we're going to move it this way. And this time we're going with the half, uh, the half dots on the vertical axis here. And so we want to go all the way to the paper's edge, so that, or sorry, canvas edge, so that you see the golden lines, and of course to keep it centered. So that you'll have golden here and golden there. And when you're set, you can deselect that transform tool, and then we're going to select that other layer and do it to the opposite edge. So we're going to move it over here. Okay. And snapping just makes the work of this a lot easier. Okay, so whoop, we have it there. There we go. Now we've got all of our golden lines. Perfect. Okay. So that's great. I just double check this. It looked like it was good, but I just want to make sure because it's kind of hidden behind. Okay. Okay. That's good. Alrighty. So now we've got that and we're going to turn the visibility back on for our 
centerpiece. And what we've just done is we've created an offset pattern. So this one is lined up in the middle. And as you remember, we just took and moved, we sort of swapped spots here for this one. And this one is over the edge, sort of these two lines are now centered. So it's, it's gonna work out. It looks a little bit odd right now, but it will work out. Okay, so now it's time to save this as um, our first pattern. But the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and turn off my canvas here. So, or the drawing guide, sorry. There we go. Okay, and then I'm gonna go to add and I'm gonna select copy canvas. Okay, then I'm gonna go over to my demo brushes and those two texture starters. So I'm gonna go with the first one. I'm gonna tap it twice to open it up and the brush will tell you which image to replace. You can either replace the shape or the grain with these essential starters. And this one tells you it's the grain that needs to be replaced. So then you just tap edit, import and paste. Okay, that's great. And when you're satisfied, you can tap done. All right, and you can see that's gonna come out really nice. Okay, so, and then you can give your name, uh, your brush a name if you want. So go ahead and tap done. Okay, so that's my first pattern. Now let's work on the second pattern and that's gonna be the, uh, the flowers. So let's go ahead and um, select that top layer there and add a layer on top of that. And then we're gonna go back to our brushes and we need to go back to our watercolor brushes. Let's see where they put them, there we are. And this time I'm gonna select the pointy petals and they are dialed all the way up and the color is still fine. And okay, oh, let's see, yep, okay. Just wanna make sure I'm working on a different layer. So I remember that this is a place where I want flowers and I wanna have a really good size one that comes in here, it's gonna be great. And then same thing right here. And then we just need to find the you know corresponding flower here. So these two are a match and these two are a match. And then this is a match. Now this is gonna be a smaller flower. So I think I'm gonna draw it first and I'm just gonna make it a three point flower, but I'm gonna bring this down so I can, again, steady my hand on the table. And I'm just gonna go like that. And and it can be different. In fact, I would recommend that it is different so that it adds some interest. I'm not so crazy about that first flower, so I'm gonna redo that one. And I actually decided to go with five there. And I'm probably just gonna go with three here, but make them big, yeah. Oh, yep, 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 well, okay. Now I'm trying to decide. <laughs> I really like that one. I like this one too, but for a different reason. Let's see if I added two more leaves here. Or, yeah. I'd like to go with an odd count. That looks, actually, that's really cute. Okay, so I'm gonna stick with that. Okay, now let's work on our big ones. And let's make that, I think I'm gonna make that a, a, a big five. So we go like that. Really press down. There we go, that looks great. Okay, so I'm gonna do the one over here so I don't forget. Awesome, and I like how they're getting close, but they're not touching, so that you know it's it's giving a sense of space there. Okay, so now we have our last one right here, and I again I want to make that a nice big one to fill that space. So I'm kind of moving my canvas around here, or actually my device, so I can really steady my hand and make it the way I want it. So Ooh, I love that. That's so cool. Okay, and I'm going to do something very similar right here. So. Okay. All right. So that's our flower. Those are our flowers. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to turn off the visibility of these other layers and just keep the flower layer there. And we're going to come over to our um, wrench here, tap add, and then copy canvas. And then we're going to go back to our brushes and our demos and that top uh, texture starter. We're going to tap that and then we're going to go ahead and replace the image the green image here. So paste. All right, and done. And when we're satisfied, we can tap done again. Now we can go back and rename these later later on, but I want to test my brushes to make sure this actually worked out the way I hoped it would. So I'm going to go back to my layers here. And with that top layer selected, I'm going to add a layer on top of that. I'm going to select that white color, just dump it right in. 
and then I'm going to create a layer on top of that. And let's choose a nice green color. I can choose that green color, but I think I want to choose my a new green color here. Something like, you know, fairly dark, kind of in that center there. Um, and I want it to maybe be a little bluer. There we go. A little lighter. Okay. That's a good uh, green color there. Okay. And then I'm going to select the texture start of the first one. And those are all my stems. And I'm going to dial that all the way up. And the thing is, the key here when doing a, a two a two step pattern is to make sure that the sizes are the same because you created them in, a, in a, a uniform size and you need to lay them down in the same size with each other. So, okay, so now I'm going to lay down the, um, oh, that's so cool. It's very light and subtle. Oh my gosh, I love this. This is why I wanted to do watercolor. <laughs> okay, this looks good. Okay, this is the step one part of our um, our pattern here. And it looks like I got everything. I just want to go over it and make sure I got it all laid down. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, and now let's choose, um, okay, we're going to create a new layer on top of that. And let's choose something really bright. I don't know if I want to go with yellow or this magenta color. Um, boy, that's a tough one. Let's see what that magenta looks like. I soften that up just a little bit. Do I want to soften it up? Well, actually, let's go back to that. I think that is a great color. We're going to do that color. <laughs> so choosing random colors from the color wheel set from previous art. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, so now we're going to go back to our brushes here, and I'm going to select the texture starter, the second one we, we created with the flowers here. Okay, and remember, we just need to dial that all the way up, and then we can lay this down, and it'll lay in the right place because it's we created this together. So. Oh, this is so cute. Oh my word, I love it. <laughs> and I love the fact that, you know, because we made this a texture stamp in two parts, we can make the flowers any color we want and then the stems and leaves any color we want. And so it makes this a really nice versatile pattern. Uh, and we could even go further and, you know, create, make those little ones different colors too if we wanted. But this is the basic the basic uh, setup here for creating a seamless uh, flower pattern. If you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell so you're notified when new videos become available. Meanwhile, I hope your day is amazing.